okay so good evening everybody and uh, just uh, before starting just a quick look at the schedule for the next uh, for this week and the next one uh, this is so, uh, sort of the front-end week so we start uh, discussing about web technologies uh, that are useful in the front-end development for um, creating or a more uh, say dynamic uh, web applications by adding uh, client-side uh, programming in the form of JavaScript uh, um, instructions actually we will learn a different way of structuring web applications so right now web applications are, is, are built uh, <laughs> with some algorithm that runs in the server and just delivers some HTML to the browser and the browser will only uh, show it with some you know styling with the CSS uh, uh, instructions but then the page is mostly static hmm? uh, which is very different uh, so what we can do today with HTML is very different from what we can expect from real websites where everything is dynamic every every place we move the mouse uh, then something may happen menus will open um, um, you know, contents will autocomplete uh, or will uh, do some online real-time checks about what we are writing and so on mm -hmm. so what are the technologies that will enable us to uh, create dynamic front ends uh, for web applications so the cornerstone of this is uh, JavaScript uh, plus some helper libraries like jQuery and uh, that will allow us to add another programming point in our architecture so if the web design was already complex today it will be twice as complex as before um, starting from today and uh, so this is the path for this week basically so uh, not this week uh, today and next week uh, we we'll learn how, how to create dynamic applications so we will make another yet another re-implementation of the to-do list uh, exercise uh, this time uh, with uh, the computation on the front-end side so uh, we had uh, the normal website application last week we already started to create rest functions now for the uh, remember for the uh, our to-do list and the next week uh, this will be here uh, we will try to match the rest server for the to-do list with the dynamic front-end so actually what was the logical computation in the in the in the server side now is going to move to the um, to the um, client side to the front end side hmm? okay so it's a, a paradigm shift and uh, we'll do it step by step so today we'll start uh, to learn about javascript and uh, programming in the web page and uh, um, on monday we we'll start uh, discussing the ajax uh, pattern pr programming pattern where actually the web page can interact with the server uh, in the background in a synchronous way hmm? and this all we, we will put together all of this uh, uh, in the next lab um, two notes for you for your organization uh, before monday you should try to to have a look at this uh, introduction to jquery jquery is a very famous um, javascript library uh, that will give you give us much faster ways of programming than what we can do with JavaScript alone. So today we'll see something that can be done with JavaScript, but jQuery helps us to do more complex things with less code, basically. So I will, uh, uh, will publish tomorrow the, the link to this uh, uh, reading, okay? So if you try to read it before Monday, so we can be more, you know, um, active and operational on, on Monday's uh, lecture. Then we have the supervised work group when you can work on your project in the lab. So there will not be any exercise in the lab next Monday. Next Thursday, we'll do an exercise about Ajax and jQuery and the rest. So we'll start to develop uh, our um, uh, to-do list uh, with front-end technologies here in the classroom. Okay, so it will be an exercise lab. So we'll have a, a text for the exercise like we do normally in the lab, but for, you know, <laughs> calendar reason uh, it happened on a Thursday and so uh, I will ask you to bring your laptop to the class this is going to be next Thursday okay a day from today 
uh, we'll have an exercise here where you can work on your laptop on this exercise okay just a practical uh, issue okay so that the, this one two three four uh, classes will close actually the front end part of the course okay then we'll have we will uh, the, the following you know uh, classes will be much more practical about hands-on experiences and technologies uh, and uh, helping you with some maybe aspects of your project that uh, that may be needed hmm? so uh, a couple of elections or of android on component selection and so on so we will be much more practical and as you see the number of classes will be reduced uh, on the mondays usually you will have just a lab for working uh, on your project hmm? so the classes are, are going to disappear basically in a couple of weeks okay that was just the practical introduction uh, let's go to the actual topics javascript hmm? um, we must uh, learn javascript because we cannot do everything in python especially front-end development in web browsers uh, is only possible with the javascript language so we have to to, to learn something about it uh, um, let's start from the the beginning so we already has some uh, um, ideas about the layers of a web application. A web application uh, starts usually with some data stored in a database, in a persistent layer in the database. Then you have an application server. Well, in our case, it's Python, Flask uh, applications. And that will generate a presentation layer, so HTML and style sheets and CSS. Okay. Today, we are going to add the fourth layer that adds interactivity on top of the third one on top of the web, web pages hmm? so we add interactive functionality to web pages everything we'll do today will run inside the browser nothing that will touch the server nothing that will touch the flash application flask application nothing that will touch the database directly okay so it's something that it wasn't possible uh yesterday mm, because uh, for us a browser was something just able to display html pages okay right now what uh, to add some interactivity to the pages uh, they they decided years ago to add uh, an interpreter for a language inside the browser so your browser is not just a layout engine for laying out html pages it also contains uh, a very much optimized uh, interpreter for these javascript languages so every time you visit a web page you are downloading the html you are downloading the style sheets you are downloading the images and whatever and you are downloading a program a javascript program that will run into your browser uh, and the instructions in this javascript code that is downloaded when you visit the website will be executed by the browser that will trust the website so basically in our picture we are adding a new type of files this javascript file here that can be are stored into the server of course but they are not processed by the web application the web application doesn't see the javascript file they are from the point of view of the web application they are just static files like images like style sheets S files that are there and the browser may request them so nothing that they write in JavaScript will ever run or be interpreted or even be seen by our Flask application server. Right? So it's just a file from the server point of view. From the client point of view, from the browser point of view, a JavaScript file is downloaded with the page as another file and will be interpreted by a JavaScript engine that we had just added to the browser here. So every instruction that you, we write here will run into our users' browsers. You know, it's the ideal virus. Every time uh, any visitor in the world will visit my website, their computer will execute my code. Nice. Hmm? Uh, that's why a lot of people are putting like uh, uh, Bitcoin miners into JavaScript code uh, so that they can exploit other people's computers. But uh, of course, there are some protections for that. Okay, uh, JavaScript code cannot do whatever it wants. Uh, 
it will run in a protected environment in which it will only interact with a very small subset of the browser capabilities hmm? but the idea is that is that i am web, a web developer i will write code that runs on my server and i also write code that runs on your browser hmm? do you like it or not and this code will need in some way to interact with the web page to understand what the user is doing where the mouse is what is typing whether it's correct and to modify change update uh, animate the web page so the other technology that is important is not just the javascript language but the interface between the javascript programs and the browser layout engine so the web page rendering language this interface is called dom d-o-m document object model which is a sort of a standard library an abstraction library by which the javascript program can see and query and modify the actual content of the displayed page so whenever javascript code wants to uh, understand what the user is doing what it wrote in a text field or by just opening a, I don't know, a pop-up menu it the javascript code will uh, read or modify the web page by reading or modifying the objects uh, in these uh, dom st data structures okay so the language itself uh, is just yet another language you see which not is not by different it's a bit strange but we don't care uh, uh, too much the the real important part is how the language can be used to manipulate the web page and manipulate the browser okay uh, we don't have any choice about the language because every browser just inter, uh, includes JavaScript interpreters. We cannot decide, ah, oh, but we want uh, to write client side code with Python. No, because no browser includes a Python engine inside them. Yeah. There was one attempt many, many years ago at the times more or less of uh, Internet Explorer 3. Hmm? So mm, you may probably you were kids at the time uh, where microsoft uh, tried to say okay in our browser internet explorer we support javascript but we also support vb script visual basic script so a, a version of visual basic of course that attempt will died immediately okay because it and it was abandoned uh, immediately because the net, uh, the web needs standards when i'm writing a website uh, my website should run on any browser so i do not it's not possible for me as a developer to imagine what kind of browser the user has installed and what kind of languages that browser will support uh, and so i should prepare my code according to the languages of a user that i don't know hmm? so uh, why on the server side i can do whatever i want i use the languages i want the databases i want on the client side on the front end i must obey to the browser to the what to what the user has installed and since i can't anticipate exactly which browsers or which operating systems the user are using i must stick to the standard way of doing things hmm? so there is one right way to, of doing things at the, at the front end so what happens now uh, that the browser is downloading a mixture of html and javascript files once the browser downloaded them it immediately splits them into two different processing pipelines the html pipeline just reads the html as a long string of text parses this html interprets understands html and uh, renders the content of the page onto the user window this is a two-step process first uh, i am reading the string of text the file converting it into some internal data structure and then i'm using the internal data structure to create the user interface uh, on the right let, let's we will come back to this internal data structure in a, in a moment on the right hand side uh, the javascript code that is being downloaded is processed by a completely parallel and separated thread where the javascript code is extracted and fed to a javascript interpreter this javascript interpreter reads and executes these instructions 
in a sandbox, so in a protected environment. This interpreter does not give to the JavaScript code access to your computer, to your file system, to your hard disk, uh, to your browser, actually, not even, because if you have three different tabs open in your, in your browser, the JavaScript running on the first tab cannot see the other two tabs. It can only see and read and touch and modify the tab in which it is running. Okay, so it's a very limited and protected environment in which the JavaScript can only interact in some limited way with this web page from which the same JavaScript was downloaded. I cannot have a JavaScript downloaded from a website to modify the content of a page I'm visiting from a different website. Hmm? This cross-origin uh, behavior is blocked by the browser, even if there are some bugs uh, and that generates, of course, some viruses. Okay, so our code is uh, working here, and what does it have access to? What can it do? It can only touch two objects the user window so the javascript could open a window close the window understand the url of the window reload the window or the web page of course for interacting with so the web page is the content of that window um, the javascript does not want or the javascript programmers would never want to modify or read directly the HTML code. Imagine having a, an, an HTML page and trying to modify something from your program by, by modifying a, a piece of string of a long document. Hmm? Would, be a, it's, would be a nightmare. But the browser will give me access to the internal representation of the web page, at least to the public part of this representation. We don't fiddle with a real, real internal data structure of the browser. That's secret. But there is a representation of the page in the public DOM, the public document object model, that is uh, accessible to the JavaScript that can know and so read and modify any aspect of the page. Even after the page has been already downloaded. So I'm downloading a page now, and that page from this moment uh, will be, can be modified, improved, changed, whatever by the javascript code that i downloaded at the same time i downloaded the, the web page hmm? so that's uh, something that up that happens after the page has been loaded okay uh well we'll not uh, spend time with javascript history uh, it's something that was actually invented more or less by mistake okay it's something that was thrown very quickly from release uh, from one lead to another uh, by Netscape Corporation, and then it's, uh, it became 1995, so it's actually quite uh, uh, um, a long technology, a long run, run technology. How to include this uh, JavaScript code into our web pages? Well, in a way that is much very, very similar to what we do with the images, for example. So if you have an image and we want to include the image into the web page, we use the image source equal the address of the image. With JavaScript, it's the same. We use the script tag instead of the image tag. Source is the name of the file that contains the, instru the JavaScript instructions. So in our HTML page, we include the link to a JavaScript file. The browser after reading the HTML page, we'll notice the script and we'll load the external JavaScript file and we'll start executing it. Well, the JavaScript interpreter inside the browser will start executing it. Hmm? This is the normal way. That there's also another way in which we can directly embed some code inside the HTML. So script, we don't include the source, we write some code directly here. Hmm? If we do if we need to do something real quick or that is only valid for that specific page but normally it's much better to have the javascript in a separate file <laughs> so that even with when we when we write it, it the, the editor knows that it's a javascript file and we must all the help for editing it hmm? 
so this is the normal way and where do we include this file well it may usually it may be included in the head section of the html or at the bottom of the body um, the idea is that the code included in the script is executed as long as uh, immediately as long as the script has been read immediately so when i put the script uh, the script will be executed before processing the rest of the page so if i put the script at the bottom of the page then i'm nearly sure there are some problems but i'm nearly sure that all the page has already been read by the browser and so the code that i'm writing here can really manipulate the elements of on the page the titles the text areas the buttons because they are already being read and processed they are already in the dom if i'm putting the script at the beginning of the page that script cannot modify any part of the page for the simple reason that the page hasn't been read already so it's not known to the browser the dom is still empty so what's the purpose of putting the script at the beginning well if i'm going to define functions for later so defining function is better than the beginning so the, this function doesn't need don't need to have access immediately at that point uh, at the definition time to the page element they are just there they can be called later from other javascript code that will be defined later in the body section so we usually we, we include libraries define functions and so on at the top of the page and then we have a delayed call of this function from the body of the page hmm. we'll see then a mechanism for which the body usually will not be needed because there will be a, an asynchronous calling but I'm, it's something for later so what can this javascript do well, well actually everything you can imagine with the web page so mm, in understanding the mouse movement understanding the keyboard actions of the user understanding uh, and modifying everything in a web page so let's try to give some examples very quickly so actually what should we learn is uh, something about the language itself the syntax the constructs and so on well basic stuff and but most importantly how the programs written in this written in this language will interact with the user so the actions of the user the mouse movement the keyboard action of the user when the user is pressing a key interacting with the browser so opening and closing changing pages refreshing them and most importantly interacting with the web page and this is the, the dom discussion we had before hmm? so this is the most important part of course first uh, we need to learn a bit of syntax uh, just to, to to be able to write something so just to be, be practical i uh, downloaded the lab 5 project so remember the lab 5 project was the uh, web application managing the to-do list okay uh, this is lab 5 it will be inserted and so on okay it's something that this is the solution of lab 5 is two weeks ago hmm? uh, just to take any possible uh, web application this one we already know and so we try to play with it uh, by adding uh, javascript code so the first step uh, would be where do we put this code we the, the javascript so we have two issues here one where do we put the javascript file javascript files are for the point from the point of view of the server or the flask application are just static files so we'll put them into static if you have ma maybe many files you could do subdirectories of static images static javascript uh, static css or whatever but basically it's under static so we can create a javascript file under static which is maybe uh, to do script.js 
or the JS will, uh, will be added automatically. Hmm? So it's a file that we define here. Right now it's empty because we don't know the syntax, any, any instruction yet. But and we will include this file from where? From the HTML template. Of course, right now the file is in the server, but no, nobody is calling for it. We should include the file in the HTML that we generate for the user interface. Okay? So, for example, we could include it here in the head section, script is, uh, sorry, source, src, is, and then we specify the location of the JavaScript file. Remember, we are inside a Flask template, okay? So for getting files, uh, from the static uh, part, uh, we use the URL for syntax uh, static file file name is uh, to do script uh, dot js. In this way, the browser will call and include this to the script, yes, file name. Uh, remember to put in slash script tag, hmm? because in, uh, it, it's strange for uh, to have a, a script which is empty, but, does, but uh, it all, always requires the closing tag. Huh? This is a special requirement for script, uh, because many uh, HTML parsers require it. So, okay. So, what happens here? If I, basically nothing, but uh, if I reload the application, we run it, the Flask application, and I reload this page, I should see two requests one for index that returned the html code and the second is static to do script.js 200 so success so the 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 the, the, the second get uh, downloaded an empty file of course which is the to do script.js hmm? we don't know anything to do with it right now one thing we could do is just to say we are here there's a very ugly instruction in JavaScript, which is called alert. That will uh, uh, open a pop-up on the page. So if I modify this file, I reload the page, and the page will tell, I'm alive. Before, you see, this, the page is still gray, because we included the JavaScript at the top, and the rest of the page hasn't been lo loaded yet. And when we cl click OK, so we actually are stopping the browser in the middle of the processing of the page. It's not nice to do that. But and then we, when we click OK, we let the browser continue to process the page. Hmm. So of course, it's not this way we program the application where by blocking everything, but just to see that, to prove that uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's already included. So it's already working. You may have noticed that I modified the JavaScript file and I didn't stop and rerun the Flask application. I don't need to do that because the JavaScript file is just a static file. It doesn't need the Flask doesn't know anything about it. Doesn't care if I modify it. Just when I when I download it, they will download the latest version of the static file. Okay, so I don't need to restart. Uh, the web application if i modifying the javascript file what i will need to do probably is to do a, a strong refresh so not, not just refresh but shift refresh that so that the page will reload all the page elements uh, even even if they are fresh okay because 
I need to refresh also the context. Okay. So what we can what can we do? Well, we need to learn a bit about the language. There are two places where you can learn everything about JavaScript. Well, there are many places because it's very uh, it's one of the most demanded languages uh, today. Uh, well, one is the W3 schools uh, that we already used, uh, but for a more complete and serious uh, documentation, uh, I would suggest you to refer to the Mozilla developer d documentation. So they have very uh, a lot of information both from the beginner point of view and from the reference uh, that uh, I think it's one of the best uh, sources for getting information about JavaScript in general about web technologies okay JavaScript syntax what does it look like well it's some mixture of a syntax uh, similar to the C language more or less similar and uh, where we have semicolons and curly braces like that hmm? uh, but uh, all the data model so the variables the objects how they are defined are not uh, uh, like C. So I, I made this diagram. So JavaScript is something that borrows uh, a lot of uh, C from the syntax, for the syntax. So we have semicolons, uh, we have uh, curly braces, uh, we have variables that must be defined and declared, unlike Python. But for the semantics, uh, it's much more similar to Python. JavaScript is an interpreter language, like Python, it's not compiled like C. JavaScript has dynamic typing, like Python, and not like C, where pi in C uh, the, the typing is strongly uh, static. Hmm? Uh, and the JavaScript has a lot of built-in types. So like in Python, we already have uh, uh, arrays, dictionary, list, and so on built-in. The same is for JavaScript. Unlike C, where there is no predefined type, uh, except for the basic int and float and double and char, okay, which are just and uh, low level types there are no high level types so it's something like you think more or less like in python you write more or less like in c hmm? the instruction so it will you will be totally confused okay uh, you are we are maximizing uh, if you want to maximize the confusion there's also java for which uh, the javascript language has nothing in common more or less uh, well, except for the similarity to the C syntax, you know, the w why, so if they are nothing in common, why is this called the JavaScript? It's a marketing reason. Okay, because when Netscape developed JavaScript, they were, they were a very small company. Which they didn't have a lot of budget. But in the same years, some microsystems, uh, that was the developer, it was a big company and a very great company um, develop, was developing and promoting the Java language so they were putting a lot of dollars a lot of money in the promotion of the Java brand so people from Netscape said okay let's not call it Netscape script let's call it JavaScript so that people are stupid and will try to you know uh, oh I, I already heard about this Java thing okay but it's all different stuff so we are stuck with the name today hmm? Uh, technically the name of the language should be ECMAScript ECMA because ECMA ECMA is a Swiss uh, standardization institute uh, that standardized the language hmm? nobody calls it li like that but officially is the ECMAScript language but everybody calls it JavaScript but okay we don't care we just need to learn it um, syntax well the comments are C++ like Let's start from the con comments. Uh, so sl double slash or slash asterisk. Variables uh, are declared, what? Well, like in C, so it's a case sensitive variables and they need to be declared. It's not true, but uh, let's assume that every variable must be declared in JavaScript. Since the typing is dynamic, well, in C, we declare a variable like int i float b we declare the type and the name of the variable but in javascript the type is dynamic we cannot force the type at the declaration time so we just use a generic var 
this is a variable okay for example uh, let's variable a variable b like that we are declaring variables there and then we can use them of course with expression assignments and so on uh, so we can do then a equal to three or whatever or b equal to hello you see that i'm assigning an integral to a and a string to b without any difference in the declaration like in python now it's nothing surprising okay uh, the type is determined by the value contained and not by the declaration we already are used to that uh, from our python knowledge uh, i said that all variables must be declared this is not really true you could also use a variable and uh, assign to it without declaring it okay it's not a syntax error it's a problem but it's a problem pro it's a programming problem because uh, don't kill me uh, variables that are being used wi without declarations are automatically global variables so they are declared at the global scope uh, this comes from a time where the only type of variables in javascript were global variables i told you it was rushed in a, in a few days or in a few weeks uh, this language so they, they didn't design it very well before deploying it and for historical reason this is still valid so instead of generating an error it will declare or modify the value of a very of a c global variable and if you are using the same name c in two different function functions it, they will point to the same variable so each function will destroy the value used by the other function this is bad okay so let's not do that there is a strict mode in javascript execution that flags this an, as an error but normally it is not so uh, javascript is has a lot of problems like this for historical reasons there are very strange things that happen and uh, today we will try to avoid them but the, the language cannot modify them another stupid thing is that semicolons can be omitted if you don't put a semicolon the, the interpreter guesses that there should be a semicolon at the end of the line except for a long list of conditions so uh, okay but uh, not my fault so you had a question the window no all the window that contains uh, all the scripts in the window so you are for them for example you can be polluting some variables inside the library because it runs in the same window context so it's dangerous okay uh, let's delete that so we always always treat uh, um var as a declaration variable uh, there's a warning here saying that okay you can use also let or const instead of var this is something very recent from javascript version 6 uh, that distinguishes from va variables that can be modified or variables that cannot be modified and declares them in a different way we don't need to go into this detail at least not today okay um data types are converted as needed so this is something that python doesn't do python doesn't take the liberty of converting a variable of one object type to another object type javascript tries to do that by for maybe saving developers time or keystrokes so these are some examples uh, we can use variables assigned to variables and uh, the typing system of, uh, of JavaScript are <coughs> actually very simple. We have a Boolean type, a numerical type, so there is no int or float or double, numerical. So there is no way of, this, of forcing a variable to include only an integer value, so that generates a lot of interesting bugs. Uh, and so I I they, are, they are all, let's say, floating point numbers even the integer ones hmm? strings of course are predefined and then 
well, objects so you can define your own objects uh, in a strange way but they always are objects so the basic type uh, are very uh, very so small so you don't need uh, to, to learn a complex type system well, the operators there are no surprise here they are the c-like operators there are operators that work also on strings so in this case you can concatenate strings with the plus operators operator and uh, for comparison that they work they work on a, on all types uh, that is equal different um, less than greater than and so on and really equal you know that three equals in a row where the double equal is usually the comparison of values and uh, the triple equal is comparison of values and types so what happens is this that javascript tries to do type conversion when it can so i to try to guess the right thing three plus two is five three in quotes plus two in quotes is three two in quotes it's a string this is a, a numerical addition and the second one is a string concatenation that's easy then what happened with uh, three plus two who knows <laughs> okay it happens that the two is converted to a string okay and uh, and so on so there's a lot of uh, uh, corner cases uh, in the typing system that when when you really don't know what happens uh, and usually a good programmer tries to avoid them so i'm not trying to dig into the the strangeness or the quirk quirks uh, of the the type system we just try to to program in a same way in a sane way okay uh, so this automatic conversion also can play tricks because five is equal to five my five as a number is equal to five as a string because be before doing the actual comparison javascript will first try to bring bring them to the same data type uh, and if you want to uh, say suppress this automatic type conversion you should use the triple equal sign so five is equal to five because they are both numbers or they are both strings but a five as a number and five as a string are not the same are not the really 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 the same they're just equal equal not equal 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 to each other hmm? it's a strange it's a strange word hmm? okay apart from this uh, strange uh, you know liberty in converting types uh, the, the basic rest of the function you know if uh, else uh, is the same syntax as c i'm putting braces because if i try to omit braces the with the uh, optional semicolons uh, things start to get interesting we won't go into there a switch uh, with the same syntax the same bad syntax as we learned in c and in java for the for statement while do while you, they are the same as c so no, no surprises here we just have to remember the old uh, c syntax hmm? and always put the braces because of the you know optional semicolon that will bite you why break and continue so nothing new okay um what can we do from a web page well uh, there are some basic interaction methods that which are based on pop-ups basically now the alert uh, is a message that will pop up on top of the page and will block the page processing and uh, there is a yes no dialog box uh, called the confirm and there is a, a text a single text uh, line uh, input box input dialog okay we won't use them because no we don't use them in web pages because they block the web page uh, for giving messages asking confirmations or asking for data we will work by modifying the web page and creating an input text into the web page not opening a pop-up window which is outside the page hmm? so these are just uh, tools for debugging 
if you want to block the ex execution at point uh, you can you can do that here hmm? I, with an alert for example but in a, in a running code uh, they are usually avoided functions are important in javascript they are probably the most important construct uh, but the declaration is uh, innocent in a way so again think about c but without uh, the type uh, declarations so in c you declare a function with int name of the function and then the parenthesis for the arguments right now we don't have a definition of the type so we just use the function keyword like for defining a variable we don't see int we see we say var and here we don't say int or char we say function so every function is defined by the function keyword name list of uh, parameters without any type just the names of the variables and the code in braces um, the function statement is strange because it defines a function but also creates an object of type function this means that the, the whole block function the whole function definition block can be used inside an expression where we expect a function object hmm? it's get, it's get, it gets weirder uh, because but it's a basic mechanism for handling asynchronous events in javascript hmm? uh, we'll see that later okay a function may return a value nothing nothing strange here okay from one script we can call a function defined in another script uh, okay uh, just re just remember that functions are the basic building blocks then you have objects that are predefined in javascript uh, i won't be boring if you want uh, to look uh, at the standard libraries of, of objects you just go to the mozilla developer network um, objects are similar to objects in python in the sense that they have a, a dynamic set of properties so you can add the properties to an object so when you create an object you already have some properties that are defined at the class level there are no classes in javascript there are, there are something called prototypes but we don't care uh, you can also add new properties as you go if you want to stick a new property to, a, to an object so actually you can modify some the structure of of uh, of, um, of types uh, there are values properties and methods uh, but as a, as a normal object here there are some example with the date object which is predefined the string object uh, has some basic uh, methods for string processing extracting character concatenating finding searching and so on uh, there are okay we we want uh, there are some references here but it's better to go to to the mozilla developer there's an array uh, data type it's an object uh, you can add the uh, elements setting values and so on concatenating arrays uh, slicing arrays uh, sorting them so basic uh, behavior for the basic objects uh, the basic data structures there's a math object that contains uh, all mathematical constants and uh, all mathematical functions there mm. well we are not excited about that okay so what well, this is just a language mm. the interesting part comes when we try to understand how the language uh, will interact uh, with the browser mm. imagine a, a code that is being downloaded into the web page and will stay latent sleeping until the user does something hmm? uh, so for example we want in our application i don't know to do something when the user clicks uh, or or goes over the delete button so this is a dangerous situation so if the user mouse goes there maybe we want to show a message saying careful for example very, st very stupid thing but we want to give this page some dynamic behavior 
so what happens is that uh, the browser is constantly uh, monitoring the user actions and converts uh, every any user action and also some browser actions into events an event is a an indication that something happened on a web page the user did something typed a letter moved the mouse clicked somewhere or the browser did something loaded an image mm, received an error or whatever and these events are objects are generated as objects and you can attach your own handler to these events so you can say whenever this event happen on this part of the page i want my function to be called my javascript function to be called and the javascript function will do whatever it wants to do with the page so usually a javascript program is a set of functions that just are waiting to be called by some user action um, because they are they have been registered as even handlers for these events on a specific part of the page so probably we want to intercept the delete event uh, the delete sorry uh, text uh, but not uh, the tasks word here so we want to attach an event render only to a part of the page not everywhere so um, there are these are some important events that are generated by the interaction of the user with some part of the page so for any element of the page the mouse movements uh, the mouse movements are tracked uh, whether the user is clicking double clicking pushing the button releasing the button mouse up uh, mouse over entering over the object or exiting from the area occup occupied by the object so we can attach all these events uh, to any part of the page a span a line a paragraph a button an image any part any object in the page can have uh, will generate these events every time a mouse uh, does something with that part the same for the keyboard the same for the form elements the most important for the form elements is uh, on uh, where that on submit so when the form is going to be submitted i can have my function run and do maybe some validation of the values we'll check whether I, all the values are, are present or not hmm? and uh, when uh, a, a variable or where some value inside the form is changed and so on when the user enters into a text field uh, that field will take the focus uh, it will generate a focus event when the cursor goes goes out from the field uh, it will generate a blur event and so on these are the most important ones there are hundreds of events uh, uh, listed in this page hmm? and uh, the easiest way to attach an event handler to a part uh, of the web page is just with an html attribute any part of the page on click on mouse over on focus equal calling a function in javascript so an attribute whose value is a function call in javascript and this function is defined into the script okay so for example we want to uh do something when the user clicks on the title let's do something simple first okay clicks on the on this line so what i could do go to the index and uh, attach an event handler on click to this uh, h1 element only to this one and maybe i can call the function uh, click title hmm? 
this click title should be a function defined in JavaScript. So let's delete everything. Function, click title. When I can say, I don't know, uh, uh, I don't know any <laughs> other operation to do other than alert. Ouch. Okay. So I need to restart the application because I modified the template. So right now, if I reload the page, it looks similar, but if I go here and click, I get the ouch alert pop up. Only here. If I do that in other places, nothing happens. If I go, if I go here, so, and here, because actually the text extends to the whole white of the page. I go, okay. So it's just a normal text with a, with a behavior header to it. And um, so we could do something about this delete. So if I'm going, for example, something very simple, uh, we would like to, you know, when I go over the delete, uh, uh, writing some message saying, okay, warning, be careful, or turning the background of the page in a red color to be, the problem is that to write something in, a, some, in somewhere or to change the color or something, we need to be able to modify the page so we need to be able to give uh, this javascript function the possibility of interacting with the page content okay so that it will be done sorry where's the, where are the slides through the document object model which is the way in which we can access a, a, a rich set of objects that compose the page so this is the block that, uh, that we have been waiting for the dom so the dom is a standard way of presenting of exposing a data structure representing the html page to the javascript code and this uh, data structure is of course a tree where the root element is the html and all the nesting of html elements one of inside the other correspond to the children of the tree okay quite uh, um, intuitive as a, as a general structure uh, the documentation about the DOM again can be found into the Mozilla documentation so for example this could be the representation of the DOM of a simple page so we have a document variable which is the, jo the object representing the whole document that contains a root element which is the correspond to the html tag that has two children the head and the body the body may contain a link and a title a and h1 so there is one class called element whose objects refer or whose instances objects represent the individual elements in the page so a page is uh, you know represented by a set of elements that correspond to the html elements and a set of attribute nodes that corresponds of course to the attributes of each of these elements plus text which is a third type of node so there are three main types of node in in the dom the main three type of objects element attribute and text text is uh, all the text that is outside the tags okay um so this slide describes the main the most important or basically all the important data types uh, in the dom document represents the whole document so the whole page element and attribute represent the parts uh, of the um of the uh, of the page node is a separate class of elements and attributes uh, node list represents a list of elements or a list of attributes when we want to get all the attributes of an element uh, they will be uh, um, returned as a node list and these are the main 
the most important types of objects so for example in this fragment of HTML we can see the document composed of uh, HTML which is this one had title and then this text the title of the page is outside the text is not inside the text so it's a represented by a text node then we have a body that includes uh, a text node what is that it's this empty space here from here to there then h1 that contains some text uh, no uh, this can be expanded it is not expanded here uh, so then there are some text uh, the p that includes this text here hello world and uh, some other empty text here after the p inside the body so this one this, this new line here so all the page is broken down into objects uh, and all the nesting of html elements uh, is represented by the nesting of these objects and when you are on uh, on any of these objects you have methods to go forward to the father down to the children left and right to the siblings and so on you can navigate very easily this graph and uh, every node in the dom has properties has a lot of uh, properties so there are objects in any way so these objects have a lot of properties that some of them represents for example the parent nodes the child nodes so all the linking of the nodes in the dom is explicitly represented in these uh, uh, in, in the, the attributes of every node so you, if you start from documents you find the child nodes from HTML you find the two children nodes and so on hmm? uh, so there's a lot long list of properties for um, DOM objects and every DOM object is automatically linked bidirectionally with the web page so the value of the attributes of the objects uh, uh, represents in real time the, the actual content of the page if the user modifies the content of a page the attribute will change immediately and vice versa hmm? um, okay so if this is the tree how can i find an element that i can work on so for example as i said uh, i want to attach an event tender to delete uh, and uh, uh, write some text so first of all where can I write this text well for example I can uh, have a new line here an empty line in this part which is an empty text uh, that I can fill dynamically when I want okay so for example in my, in my page I have the after uh, you can see all your tasks uh, i have another maybe a div element which is empty well i will write something maybe we can put a class uh, that will draw it uh, in red color or whatever and we want uh, from our code to modify the value the, the content of this uh, div element first of all we need we must make this element easy to find from the javascript code because i don't want to search from the tree all the nodes and seeking for a div uh, which is after a p but before a ul because there may be seventy thousand divs in this page so an easy way is to give an id we already did that for the css so uh, id is uh, the wa warning So if I give an ID to an element, then it will be easy to find it with a function called get element by ID in JavaScript. And we'll return the element object object corresponding to that. So what I what I want to do is to create a new function. Uh, warn me warn on delete that will find the div uh, so it's 
var the div is document dot get element by id with the id uh, warning this this element id is something that is added by the by the, the by the editor okay it's not part of the language And then I want to modify the content of this element uh, by issuing a warning message. I can do that uh, with the inner, for example, inner text property. The text included inside this element equal to be careful. Now, I just need to call this function whenever the user mouse goes over, not, not, not when I click it, but before, when just, when I just over the delete link. So I go back to the index.html, I find where the link is created here, and I add an attribute, so I have the href attribute, and I add the second attribute on mouse over call what's the name of the function warn on delete warn on delete here so i attach the call of the event handler as an attribute to the element uh, in this case is the link uh, that will generate uh, the action and I also mark, in a way, some uh, elements with, the, well, with some tags for making them easier to find later on. So let's write. Reload the page. Okay. Let's do it at, again in slow motion. When I go to all over delete, hop, be careful, just appear there. Okay, it's uh, it's not a very nice because uh, as, as soon as I go here, the text shifts down. So I need to be more careful with the spacing, with the layout and so on. Uh, but just we, we just call the function here. Uh, it's not nice be also because <coughs> this be careful um, doesn't disappear. So probably we should attach a second event handler for the mouse out event. Okay, so for example, the on mouse out, so we add, we, we handle the event of the mouse over event, we should also handle the on mouse out clear warning. And so we define a second function here warning where we find again the same element but in this case we clear its uh, inner text So let's let make me make me let let me move uh, this div uh, to the bottom. Okay, so that the, the list doesn't shake up and down. The real the real job would be to do that to make it, it appear floating over the text uh, so it doesn't disrupt. Uh, this will be a, a CSS job. Okay. Okay. Again. delete when I move the mouse away it will disappear and so on on any of them of course I generated this in a loop so if we have a look at the HTML 
we see that this on mouse over on mouse out has, have been repeated many many times so there are many event handlers registered on many elements of the page that all point to the same function i could also inside the function uh, have inf some information about which element generated this link so the function has an implicit uh, uh, inside the function and i could use the this object for example war on delete uh, i have a this object that implicitly points to the html element uh, where it was called uh, so i'm guessing here uh, attribute uh, this is a link so probably a let me guess i'm not sure okay i'm trying to extract some information from this element just to be sure that i can re uh, retrieve this information okay is is not working anymore why okay we can go to the debugging okay how can we debug this code we should debug it into the browser from the server side nothing happens only this file was delivered but uh, you can the, the server doesn't know anything so but we are uh, we are uh, lucky that uh, all the major browsers have a web developer menu this is uh, firefox but in chrome there is uh, another one like that and we can uh, okay we can make it appear like uh, shift control i when you have uh, a debugger here that will let you open all the javascript uh, executed by the page and debug it so for example there is a, some problem with this code that i wrote for sure because it's not it's not working anymore the browser doesn't give you any error message hmm? so you need to seek it out um, for example we have a console Okay, so we had the interactive debugger and the console. The console said that this dot atra is not a function. So this was my my mistake. So let's go here. Maybe make, let's put a breakpoint here and uh, move the mouse uh, to the point here. So I move the mouse. I the function is being activated, but since I put a breakpoint here. I'm now in debug mode hmm? so I can see let's make more space Try to, I don't know if I can increase the font here no it doesn't work yes a bit okay so I can uh, so I can execute this function step over step into so the uh, always the normal cases okay i executed this instruction here and i see that the ddiv is now defined uh, that points to this object uh, the div warning and so on i uh, know this is a window sorry Oh, sorry the, the my mistake okay of course it was my mistake but then now I, I realize which one is it so i can see the object uh, uh, it's a good example of the representation of this object the div so these are all the properties of our div the three children they, it doesn't have any child notes uh, it has uh, no children because it's empty 
and there are all the event handlers registered on that there are all the styles uh, defined on that uh, and all the classes there are also a class class name all the css classes defined on that element so from here i can manipulate every aspect of that specific uh, node hmm? uh, my mistake was thus was it that this uh, in this context points to, to window is the window and not uh, the element in which it, it was called that's because where is that here the variable this should point to this element in the context of the call not in the function because of course the function is in a different it's called uh, is declared uh, outside okay so i should capture this element uh, and uh, use it here with a parameter link no, uh, um, delete text so i use the delete text that should be a node an element and i extract the attribute so let's try it again Uh, we, I need first to stop the debugger here. So let's clear this breakpoint. Uh, rerun the server because I modified the template. Reload the page. And try to. No, it's not working. not a function so delete text uh, what is that okay so let's try to debug it ag again step step delete text is the a of course the a doesn't have an a attribute the a you see here the link text uh, as a source attribute i should get the source attribute so it's easier like that this element uh, as a that href here href not source okay so i got the element uh, from which the event was generated i pass the reference to this element to the function and they can query some information about this event now it may be possible that it's working never be sure okay right now i just appended the url of the button uh, to the message here this is just to show that we need in some cases uh, to learn uh, to understand e even if the same action the same function should be called uh, we need to understand on which element it has to be called so right now it's just a url which is very ugly to see but we could add another attribute uh, a custom attribute any you know i said uh, uh, JavaScript objects uh, have a set of attributes where you can add any one when you want. Also, th is working, this is also working for the HTML attribute. So you can add your own custom attribute to the HTML code and then query it uh, from the JavaScript and understand, okay, for, for the element that I'm trying to delete. I ask you the user for confirmation and if he confirms, uh, 
then I will delete really number four because the JavaScript function will need to know that which element on which delete button I've been, I've been selected, selecting okay so this is just the basic mechanism huh? we have in our mind that uh, basically a JavaScript file contains a set of functions these functions will be called by the browser automatically when the user does some actions well technically when some events uh, that are that are processed by the browser are registered with an event handler and registered in event handlers can be done in the html code with the on attributes on click on mouse over and so on hmm? um, this is the simplest way functions that if you look at them nobody's calling these functions there's no any there's not a, any explicit call for these functions okay um okay next week uh, we'll try to climb uh, two more steps uh, or three in this ladder one is uh, uh, trying to avoid having to modify the HTML like this it's painful and it links too strongly the HTML with the JavaScript every time you have to modify the JavaScript mod debug uh, the application debug the HTML and so on it would be much better to have the JavaScript itself register its own event handlers so for every link uh, inside the list item maybe we mark it with a class so it's easy to recognize uh, add some event handlers so we will we learn that it's easy to register an event handler in the html code but then we don't like it too much hmm? we prefer not to do it in this way we prefer that the javascript code uh, register its own handlers so that the html developer doesn't care about what the javascript developer does hmm? so this is the first thing the second is that uh, we will uh, discover that uh, the execution of a function may in some in many cases requires you to schedule another event another event handler so it will be a sort of a recursive registration of event handler that will will um, will make things much more complex to follow at least and uh, for making them easier to follow we will be using the, uh, the jQuery library that I mentioned and uh, try to read something about that uh, um, uh, because it it's, uh, simplifies a lot uh, all these uh, tasks like this document that get element by ID then I need to mark every element with an ID or by class but I, if, I, if I'm seeking by class I will find a list of elements then I will need to find the one that I need and so on so there's a lot of uh, let's say low level manipulations in the DOM that is strongly simplified with the jQuery library okay and so we will make the, the next steps uh, using a library that will uh, simplify our code but the main mental model is the same everything starts with a user action and the uh, the browser will react uh, by calling a set of functions hmm? and the function may modify the code of the page the content of the page okay that's all for today sorry for being five minutes late and uh, we'll see you on monday <laughs>